Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to take a external synth or drum machine, route it into the Spectralis and have the Spectralis modulate it, basically use the Spectralis as a sound or sound effect uh, machine, using it just sort of as a way to create new interesting ideas for what you have. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you what what you have to do to get the sound going in uh and playing it because right now it's all connected i have the midi cables all connected correctly i have the outputs going from the mono machine into my spectralis and if i push play you can see that it says ext for external so it's playing the pattern but you're not hearing anything so let's just do that real quickly to do that you go into the filter bank hit the level and then you push the last encoder which uh says ext in and you'll see that you're you're left with a screen and we'll just bring it through the left and right some okay and that's that's my original sound uh, it shouldn't be colored in, in any sort of way because it is just going right directly out basically in and then out so now let's listen to it going through the multi-mode filter. I'll set the volume or the in out the volume that the input will be going into the filter uh, to 220. That's just so it's not completely going to oversaturate uh, when it goes in there. I'm not quite sure what a what the best volume is for that but it works out okay here so if i push play now you don't hear anything because the sum is not going through so we need to actually bring the filter out right now nothing's being triggered so you're you're not going to hear it what we can do is actually just uh press the eg release so make sure you're on the part select uh, analog synth and you push the envelope generator release and we go to bypass settings and now we'll turn the multi-mode bypass up and if you're using the kind of default patterns that i have um which i'm guessing you are because me I, i'm still using these 10 years later um after getting my first spectrals so what you have to do is you push the cutoff button or the encoder and it will take you to the menu and we need to go to page six and we turn the bus volume up so now you'll actually hear it going and we've got three different filters so I'll just kind of play through them a bit I have to be a little careful because I don't want the resonance to go up too high and kind of screech so I'm going to start with the low pass open it up all the way close the resonance and push play That high pass filter is great for really thick and bassy bass kicks or kick sounds. So now we're on the band pass. Yeah, there it was. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to just bring it back through the low pass filter. From there, you can add some effects if you want. So you'll go, you'll go into your filter again. You'll kind of push into that, and you've got multiple uh, menu levels, and so you can just page up and down, get through them. And we're gonna get to the page six. Uh, no, I'm sorry, page seven.
that that can get kind of crazy. But you can do a lot of things with those different effects because not only can you send them uh, as a kind of time-based or tempo-based, sorry, uh, they can also sort of be non-tempo-based, which is how I sort of got those um, almost flanger effects. Um, now, I've never really created a great reverb sort of sound from the delays. Uh, I think there are a lot of people that attempted it, and it just never really worked out. Uh, at least for me, I never got anything that sounded that good. But you basically have two delay lines, and you're able to, if you go into them, you got a pre-delay and then a regular delay, and then how much it's being fed, uh, the spread of it, so it kind of becomes more wide stereo ping-pong effect, uh, pre-delay uh, feedback. Uh, so I guess in a way, maybe there's sort of four-ish delays. Uh, I guess I'm not sure how the pre-delay affects affects the sound so whoops um and then you have a rate and depth for how much modulation is being done to the pitch of that delay okay so that's one thing you can do with it we could route it through the low uh the um i'll, I'll just do do this really quick uh route it through the 24 db low pass filter so again we go back to the filter bank level push the last encoder turn that off for the multi-mode and turn the low pass on let's turn it up all the way and just hear how it kind of saturates that sound uh envelope i don't have it bypassed yet so we go into the envelope generator release and i'm going to also set that for the feedback i'm sorry the filter bank that's not feedback um so let's go back to our low pass filter and i'm going to turn the resonance down um cut off all the way up well that was kind of loud but can turn that down so you can hear that saturation so let's turn that let's tone it down to 200 uh, for the levels and see if that's any better Um, one thing you should do if you haven't done it is there's a, there's a mod you can do on on one of the boards on the inside which actually opens up the low pass filter more. I do that uh, with these and it's fairly simple. Um, I can probably find that uh, mod if you need it. I've I've done it actually on four different no three different units now and it's easy to do. So. All right, great. So now why don't we use an oscillator? We have four, you have four digital oscillators. Use one of those to modulate the, uh, to do frequency modulation on the filter. And yeah, we can, let's, let's use the multi-mode 12 dB low pass filter. So I'm going to reroute it now, reroute the sound. So uh, if we click on the, um, the last encoder, I'll just do that and bring it back through and set it to 220. Set it to 20 here. And close close it going through the low pass filter. Let's see if we can hear it, make sure everything sounds good. All right, so basically how you do this is now we need to go into the set routing. And we want the filters to not be routed, uh, I'm sorry, we don't want the filters to be triggered at all by our trigger groups. So now I'll go to page one and I'm just gonna use VCO one. It says VCO, but it's a digital oscillator. And I'm gonna turn the rest off. There we go. So now you can see that only VCO one is being triggered. Now I'm gonna go into the VCO settings that's over here and, and I'm going to turn their output I'm going to turn them off from going through the filters. Otherwise, you might hear it, hear the oscillator, uh, because it's being activated. And if the if the filter is bypassing the envelope generators, you'll hear the oscillator go through it. So I'll turn all that off, and so that's on pages. That's basically pages three through five for the ind individual filter or individual oscillators. So you'll hear nothing uh, apart from our sounds here. So I'll have to go into the sequence edit, go to you push function 
and I'm going to go to sequencer line 11. You can do that either by kind of scrolling through here or using shift page down page up. So trigger group one, that's the one we want to be on. I'm going to set the length to one for all of this. Uh, yeah, one. And then we'll go to page two and I'll change the re resolution to fourth notes. Okay, now we'll go back to page one. might be wondering why aren't we hearing anything well it's because I haven't actually turned on the frequency modulation for that oscillator so the oscillator is activating but going nowhere because it has no output so let's do that now And you can hear that this is tempo synced um, as well because these steps are occurring obviously at the same beat as as the external gear. So everything's kind of happening at on the tempo, on the beat. And let's add some effects. We can change um, how the the steps are being activated. Right now, it's just kind of the direction is forward, so it's just kind of going like that and starting over. We can have it randomized, which is always kind of fun. Whoops, that uh, did not do that because I wasn't in the right screen. So you need to hold the function and then random. So when you hold the function, you'll see there are some settings there. Um, I guess you could probably change the page. Wow, I never thought about using these. That's okay. I don't find them quite as useful. Okay. So that completely changes the sound of this. Now something we can do is actually route the the filter through the fixed filter bank. So let's just do that and see how it sounds. The filter bank itself is being bypassed. Um, so, you, so it's bypassing the envelopes, so you should hear it. Although right now I don't have any of the... Um, filter banks open or the any of the fixed frequencies open so each one of these encoders when you push the filter bank button they each one relates to its own fixed frequency so there's low pass 265 hertz 390 all the way up to um, 3900 and then high pass and so when you when you turn them you you'll be able to see it's it's opening up so if I turn off, if I go into the filter and basically, oh, no, I want it. Let's just keep it there. If I close it from the bus, we shouldn't hear anything. Oh, apart from the effects, which are always kind of summed out. So let's just turn that off for now. So we, should, we don't hear anything. But I have the filter bank button pressed. So let's open the high pass. Okay, so right now all you're hearing is noise. So I'll have to go back and figure out why that is. So if we go into the VCO, I 
I have to turn off enveloped noise volumes. So those are off now. And okay. Yeah. So I forgot to turn the, if you go to this filter, I forgot to turn on the output to the filter bank. So that, that will affect everything. I turned off the bus, but I didn't turn on the filter bank. So you can hear I even make mistakes. All right. So, whoops. Let's go back to the filter bank. And let's close everything again so we know what we're working with. Because I'd kind of started opening things not knowing why I was hearing just noise. But I resolved that. So let's turn up the low pass. So that's a bit much. So we'll just open the high pass. So only one kind of set of frequencies. And these are all kind of the upper range, upper bands coming through. And otherwise 3900. Kind of hard to hear. But let's go into actually the filter bank settings. So if we push the button right underneath the level, you'll see we've got the Q. So I'll turn that down. And then I forget what the FBFS stands for. Sorry. <laughs> OK. So I'm just opening up the different bands. So let's just let's just quickly turn off the oscillator. So we won't actually hear any of that frequency modulation. So we'll hear the original sound going through the whoops, I'm so sorry. Uh, going through the cutoff <laughs> through the low the, through the um band goodness the 12 db low pass filter i opened it all the way up and and closed the resonance all right so here's what you hear now so i'm going to open up different bands on the fixed filter bank so let me just clarify where i'm at i have the sound coming from the mono machine going into the inputs that is being routed to the 12 dB low pass filter that is being routed to the filter bank right now and I'm just opening up different bands Now, one thing we can do is actually sequence each fixed filter bank. Uh, each filter bank, what would you call it? So they're, they're bands to be opened at specific intervals uh, through a sequence. So let's just close all of these. So here, I'll play it and we can hear it just going away. All right, totally closed. So what we, how we do that is we'll go into the sequencer edit. So remember we sequenced those uh, oscillator one on trigger group one. Well, if you go down, uh, this is typically how a default pattern is set up is that uh, lanes one through 10 of the sequencer lines are related to the trigger set for each of those bands. So one is for the LP, two is for 265, then 390, 550, et cetera, all the way up. So now that our sequence is still running, you can't hear anything because the sound is going through that filter and they're coming through the fixed filter bank, but the filter the fixed filter bank is, is completely closed. So let's start adding some steps on lanes one through 10 and see how it sounds. Now you have different types of um, basically envelopes for each, like a step envelope. Uh, type is decay. Uh, that's just for like it starts out loud and quiets down. And then hard, I think 
I'm not quite sure what the hard is versus pulse. Uh, I thought they were kind of similar where it's sort of on and then off. Uh, you can just play around with these. You can change the the length so you can hear them more clearly when you do it. Um, then there's soft and attack. So normally I use the decay here. Um, and we'll change the length. Depends. And we can change the depth, uh, kind of how open it will be. So let's just start. So we push we push the steps here. Let's, let's just do one, two, three, four. And... Let me make sure. Oh, got to turn that off. <clears throat> so I guess I would have thought <coughs> thought I'd be hearing something with that, but oh, the depth. There we go. I I guess the depth was set to zero. I don't know why that was, but it was. So the depth was set to zero, so I might have to play around with that with the other sequencer lines. But you can hear it for just that uh, frequency. So let's just keep going. So I had to restart this whole thing because uh, my camera decided to have a full card, which was a mistake to not check that before I recorded this, which is why I'm kind of going fast. But the for some reason, when I reloaded this pattern, it seems to have kind of made some settings change. So like if I push the step, it's well, now it seems to be working on this one. But it was setting basically the depth to zero, so you wouldn't hear anything. That was why I was kind of confused. I don't know why it did that. But normally normally the depth is already set to, to 63. So I don't think you'd have a problem like I had. But anyway, you kind of know how to resolve it now. Um, so just if you're not familiar, um, when, when you see these carrots... Um, that just means that you could push the encoder and it will take you into a new menu. So here it's, um, you can set all, all steps that you can see to that depth or the length, depending on what, what you have active. Uh, and you could change the type uh, as well. So just kind of a quick way to modulate all of them at once. So we can n now send this through, uh, send, effects through it as well and the way you do that for the filter bank you can actually see the see the uh, information above the encoders so you can when you twist them you'll see it's sending it through the effects one
And now we can turn on oscillator one again, see how this sounds. different things you can do with that um one of the cool things you can do with the fixed filter bank is actually route each band through either you can pan you can basically pan them and then when they're being sequenced you're hearing them from different areas um so let's just show you that so you basically push the um the pan button for the filter bank and then twist the knobs related to that correlate with the particular bands <laughs> so yeah it sounds completely different than what we started with maybe it doesn't sound good but you know you can make you can make uh really you can do whatever you want with it um and right now we could also um, now route this through the through the 24 dB low pass filter. So how you would do that? So basically, we have to make sure that our multi mode is just going through into the filter fixed filter bank, which it is. Now we push the level, and we are going to um, turn the bus level. So you have to just bring the level down. Now route it through the low pass filter. So I'm going to close the low-pass filter. Let's see. Make sure we don't hear anything. Oh, yeah. We, we hear the effects. Yes, thank you, effects. We know you're there. Okay. Now we don't hear anything. So let's open up the low-pass. All right. It sounds like a right mess. Um, so one thing I think I'm going to turn off for now is the filter bank being seek actually let's just take the filter bank out of it so we're just going to go from the the, the multi-mode filter through to the um so we'll close close it out from going to the filter bank and send it out to the low pass filter <laughs> That's a little easier to work with right now because what we could do now is actually sequence another oscillator. Let's say oscillator two. So we'll go to set routing. Oscillator two will go through trigger group two. And that will then sequence uh, if we go into our low pass filter and we go to uh, filter uh, FM and we turn that up. Well, now we need to sequence it, but we shouldn't hear anything if we just push play. Anything besides what we already had established. Okay, so now we go to... Um, okay, we go to the digital oscillator section, so it says VCO. And we will go to um, make sure that it's not being activated so it's not being activated uh, or it's not activating or going through any of the filters um, so now we go to our sequencer edit and we're going to go to lane 12 or sequencer line 12 and now we can actually sequence some things here so i'm going to change the resolution to um to fourth Whoops. So let's just start sequencing some notes, seeing what 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 sounds good or what what we want. Um, so this is just going to be random. I'm going to change the length to one and velocity. Sure, can be 62. So I'm going to just 
sequence all of these steps, and then I can use the encoders above to change the um, to change the actual note value. So we get something kind of random, steppy. <laughs> actually start messing, messing with the oscillators themselves by changing their wave shape, changing their uh, overall tuning, and we could maybe get some really crazy sounds. I, I know it might be a bit much because we sort of got some melody stuff going with the, the drums. I don't know. Up for you to decide what you think. So let's, let's try that. Let's start messing with the oscillators, oscillator one and two. So oscillator one was modulating uh, the, the frequency modulation of the multi-mode and then oscillator two was modulating uh, the 24 dB low pass. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think that sounds pretty good for today. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, and if you have questions about what I ran through, I mean, yeah, just let me know. I'll see what I can do to, to help you figure it out. Maybe I'll just sort of end it with... Um, well, let's see. I think I have like some weird beat on this other pattern. So what? how does that sound? I don't know. So let's just change the tempo here and do something crazy with it.